I can. I mean, good morning and welcome to St. Luke United Methodist Church. Uh, just a reminder that our our attendance and offering is at the tall tables, and when you come into the church, uh, of course we're having conversations and we're we're having uh, we're visiting with one another. Uh, since it's so beautiful outside, we'd ask that you also have uh, some of those other conversations after the service outside. Uh, also, you know, keep in mind that as we enter and leave, let those who are closest to the exit 
leave in that direction. Appreciate everyone wearing a mask or a shield today. Uh, help protect one another. First thing that we'd like to do, uh, simply because uh, she was here for the first service and trying to give her a break since she's uh, been through one service already, but Reagan Allen, who's a member of the church and uh, uh, has a service project uh, that she's conducting, I'd like to have her come forward and just talk a little bit about that service project right now. Okay, so hi, I'm Reagan Allen. Um, I'm a senior at Miller North High School. And last February, I decided that I wanted to join the Boy Scouts. Um, <laughs> it was just out of curiosity. And I thought I probably wouldn't last very long because, you know, hanging out with boys all day is a little bit uh, draining. <laughs> so um, I'm still in it, surprisingly. I'm actually here, and I'm four months away from getting my Eagle Scout. So yeah, I've worked pretty hard. Thank you. <laughs> So as you know, with getting the Eagle Scout, you have to do a big service project. So I decided that I wanted to help my community here at St. Luke's and help um, do some landscaping over on the south, the south end of like the west entrance, you know? So I thought that, you know, if we love this place so much, we might as well make it look like we love it as much as we do. So we're gonna be um, doing some weeding, some, you know, lifting of trees, all that fun stuff. And it's a little bit of labor, but you know, if we do it together, then we can really get some work done. Um, as, being a, as it being an Eagle Project, a big part of it is to lead people. So the more volunteers I can get, the better it's gonna be and the more we, we, that we can get done, okay? Also, if you're unable to come, um, if you don't really want to do all the weeding and stuff, I know that I'm not a big fan of weeding and <laughs> plenty of other people aren't either. Uh, we're also taking a lot of donations for plants because we also are gonna plant a lot of new shady, loving plants. Um, yeah, so if you have any of those hostas, daylilies, any of those fun plants, we would love to take them. Okay. So you're planning on planting a lot of hostas? Sometimes. Yes, lots yeah. of hostas. I know they're like weeds um, of the plant world, except they're pretty. Yes, so, they are. Love <laughs> If hostas. you have any hostas that you're, you know, weeding out or, you know, thinning out, we'd love to take them as well. So we're talking about south... Uh, we're talking about canopy entrance. We're talking about un under the trees, mm -hmm. that area. And when are you going to do the weeding? So um, our first volunteering weekend is going to be next Sunday, um, September 27th. It's going to be from 1 to 4 o'clock. Um, you can come anytime between then and just come and help out. Um, just like we'll mark down when you come so we can get a good hour count. Um, and then, so that's when we're doing the weeding and all the, you know, deconstruction, you know, all the fun stuff. So then the weekend after that and then the weekend after that, so um, September 11th, I mean October 11th, there we go. It's hard to get these months. Um, so October 11th is when we're going to do all of our planting. And if you want to bring in donations of plants, um, I'm going to collect them next Sunday. And if there's some people who can't bring them in next Sunday, I'll take them on any Sundays. We just want to get a good head count of plants, you know? Okay. Any questions that anyone has? What are the times again? Um, they're going to be 1 to 4 on October 27th. No, September 27th and October 11th. There we go. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, thank you very much. Yeah, of course. Yeah, wonderful. Okay, let's, uh, let's start our worship uh, by listening to our prelude.
direct you to the uh, screen as we read our opening prayer. God, whom we call love, you welcome us into this time of worship and remind us that this world, this place, and this moment belong to you. You welcome us as strangers and travelers on a journey we do not always want or understand. You ask that we feed the hungry, clothe the naked, and comfort those who mourn. O oh God, we ask that as we learn and grow and attempt to serve you and others, we will be given the grace to love you and our neighbor in all that we do. We pray that at the end of each day, we can say that those whose love is a stranger will have found in each of us generous friends. Amen. Our scripture lesson comes from Exodus 16, 2 through 15. The whole congregation of Israelites complained against Moses and Aaron in the wilderness. The Israelites said to them, If only we had died by the hand of the Lord in the land of Egypt when we sat by the flesh pots and ate our fill of bread. For you have brought us out into the wilderness to kill this whole assembly with hunger. Then the Lord said to Moses, I am going to rain bread from heaven for you, and each day the people shall go out and gather enough for the day. In that way, I will test them, whether they will follow my instructions or not. On the sixth day, when they prepare what they bring in, it will be twice as much as they gather on the other days. So Moses and Aaron said to all the Israelites, In the evening you shall know that the Lord uh, who brought you out of the land of Egypt in the morning you shall see the glory of the Lord, because he has heard your complaining against the Lord. For what we uh, that uh, you compl <laughs> for what uh, are we that you complained against us? And Moses said, When the Lord gave you meat to eat in the evening and uh, your fill of bread in the morning, because the Lord has heard the complaining that you uttered against him. What are we? Your complaining is not against us, but against the Lord. Then Moses said to Aaron, say to the whole congregation of Israelites, draw near to the Lord, for he has heard your complaining. And as Aaron spoke to the whole congregation of Israelites, they looked toward the wilderness, and the glory of the Lord appeared in a cloud. The Lord spoke to Moses and said, I heard the complaining of the Israelites, Say to them, At twilight you shall eat meat, and in the morning you shall have your fill of bread. Then you know, shall know that I am the Lord your God. In the evening the quails came up and covered the camp, and in the morning there was a layer of dew around the camp. Then the layer of dew lifted. There was a sur On the surface of the wilderness was a fine flaky substance, as fine as frost on the ground. When the Israelites saw it, they said to one another, What is it? For they did not know what it was. Moses said to them, It is the bread that the Lord has given to you to eat. Hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying to the church. And now uh, continue uh, watching the screen for the children's sermon. everyone. How are you today? Hope you're having a fantastic day. I sure am. I am just eating this yummy sandwich that my wife made me for lunch, and it is so good. Man, you know, I think that nothing is quite as good as a sandwich made with cheese and bacon and tomatoes and cucumbers. Mm, mm. So good. 
delicious. Are you hungry yet? You know, eating this sandwich today actually makes me think of our scripture verse. You know, in the story, the people were really hungry. So hungry that they were pretty mad about it, actually. I guess you could say they were hangry. You know, hungry and angry together? I kind of understand that, actually. I mean, look, they were out in a desert. No water fountains, no Hy-Vee, no Costco, nothing. Not even a DoorDash in the area. Like, dude, these people were going to die. But the story says that God heard that they were hangry and provided for them, even in a desert. Whew. You know, if God hadn't have provided for them, they would have been toast. As a matter of fact, I'll bet you they wish they had some toast. But yeah, look, they were going to die. Anyhow, God doesn't just provide for people like in the story today like people a long time ago. God provides for people today, too. People who are in need. People like us. You know, mostly I think God provides through other people, through their generous giving, and sometimes God may even provide through organizations, like a food shelf or a church or maybe even your school. However God provides could be very different, but I hope you remember that God cares about you. That's the main point of our story today. Anyhow, I hope each of you are doing well. I know it's not easy in this time with the virus around. I mean, it's just really difficult for all of us we don't really like to wear the mask because, well, it's itchy and it's hot and it's just uncomfortable. We don't like to do that, but we do it. And we don't probably like to be socially distanced from people. We like to be close to the people we love and care about, but we do that too. We do it because love wins. Love always wins. You know, when you take care of yourself, when you do what's best for yourself and you remain healthy, well, love wins. When you care for your friends and your neighbors and your family, those people that you're connected to almost every day, love wins. And when you treat a stranger like they were a friend or a family member, love wins. I hope you remember that love always wins. And when we love, well, that's when we're most like God. Amen.
Joanne, thank you. It was one of those ones where I probably should have reminded folks that you could sing all you wanted. You just couldn't sing out loud to that one because that's the one that you can hum around with. Hey, we learned a lot this week at St. Luke. One of the main things that we learned this week was that I am a lousy Jewish carpenter. I'm really, this is, um, this isn't a sukkah. It is an impression of a sukkah. It's not a sukkah because if it was a real sukkah, it would have three sides on it. But if we had three sides on it, it was going to you know, be a great big box in the road. Um, it's kind of close. One of the things about being a sukkah is that the, the roofing material has to be cut off from the ground. Um, it has to be a natural thing. And you have to be able to look through it and see the stars. So that's, that's the real reason this isn't a real thing, is because we can't see the stars. Somebody suggested we could get like Christmas lights and put up there, and it'd be kind of close, but it's still not the same thing. Anyway, the first version of this was made out of tuba twos. It ended up over there. It just kind of, I accused Chris of teaching the kids about the Battle of Jericho, and then he walked around it seven times, and it just fell over, but he said he did not do that. Um... I, I, I made the, I got it out here um, and built it partly because we could, <laughs> you know. I thought it would just be fun to make it because since we're using the same worship space all the time and we've got it laid out a little bit differently, we can, we can make things like this. Sukkahs are, they're shelters. They're temporary shelters. And they're used within the Jewish community to celebrate the holiday of Sukkot. Okay, Sukkot comes five days after Yom Kippur. So this past, this past weekend, um, I believe Friday was the date, was Rosh Hashanah. It was the Jewish New Year. A week after that is Yom Kippur, the Day of Atonement. Actually, the Day of Atonement will be um, next, start next Sunday evening and be Monday. And then starting on October 2nd is the holiday of Sukkot. And these temporary shelters remind us of a couple of things. The, the holiday is one that, um, well, it reminds us of, it's an ingathering holiday. It's a harvest holiday. In, in, um, back in the day when the fields were all on the outside of the city or the village, those who would tend the farms and the vineyards and all of that would live in the town. And they would go outside the town to, uh, to farm. Well, when the harvest was on, uh, sometimes it got too busy. So they would build these temporary shelters out near the field so that they could be there when things got ripe. They could, you know, watch to make sh sure things were okay in all the areas. So these shelters remind us of that. They also remind us of the, the time in which the Israelites wandered in the desert and the temporary shelters that they would build to stay out of the sun and live in at the time. So it's a holiday that does two things. It, it helps us remember um, the, the blessings that we receive and also the time that, was, that wandered. We're gonna, this is going to stay up. It's going to stay up for two more weeks, <laughs> we're hoping, and we'll talk about those things as they come. Okay? But today I really wanted to have a conversation with you about it because... Um, this, I think there's things that we can learn about this holiday that can help us in our faith journey, um, especially at this time. Um, I've had, I don't know the neighborhoods that you all live in. Um, you might notice in your neighbor's yards that on the back side of the house um, or in the yard, they're building one of these. Okay. Now, I wouldn't suggest that you go do a chin up on the fence. Don't, you know, don't do anything inappropriate, but, you know, you may see them, all right? And during the holiday, there's um, the times that I've got to go spend time in, the, in a sukkah, families invite people to come eat. You share a meal. Um, and you invite, <coughs> not just, you invite not just your neighbors, but others that you would like to share this kind of special time of, of coming together. The, the rabbi has joked with me a few times that he says, you know, it's got to be a Jewish thing that when finally it gets cold enough that you have to wear a jacket outside, then we decide to go out to eat. All right? <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> it was funny. Thanks, Cassie. 
Um, so this is what I'm wondering. Today, the scripture lesson, you know, we had that, that story right at the beginning of the wandering in the desert where the people are hangry. I really appreciated that, that line from, from Chris because it, it, it describes exactly how they were. They were hungry and they were angry, but they were also scared. And they were nervous and they were um, lost in, in how they understand who they were and where they were going to go. It's not a time much unlike how we are now. I don't, I don't know about you all, um, but sometimes, at times I'm not, the, I'm not always really optimistic, okay? And sometimes I can be a little bit cynical. Those of you who know me well are going a little bit. You can be a little bit cynical. Um, I'm not sure in the next two or three months if life is going to change a whole lot. Okay? It's probably going to be a lot like it is now. In fact, in some ways, it might even get to be a little more strained. And we as people of faith are going to be trying to find ways in which to keep ourselves centered, balanced, and fit to live with over the next few weeks. How is it that we can continue to um, practice our faith in a way that keeps us connected with each other, but also, also helps buoy us up in a time when we don't feel that often? One of the things that a sukkah does, I think, is this. Is it gives people a choice. It gives you a choice. You can choose to step out of the way that you've normally done things, the way you quote-unquote always do things, and begin to look at it from a different point of view. Like this. Now, I've thought about this for the folk who are, who are um, going to watch this from home, you know, who have struggled all week long with teaching kids. I talked to one mom. She says, yeah, I have a full-time job, and my second full-time job is to be a paraeducator for a second grader. You know, I, I get that it's busy, but you can just grab whatever sandwich you're going to eat for supper and go step out on the porch or sit on the deck or if that's not quite how your house is uh, put together, how many of you have a room in your home that you never go into? Not the storage room, but just kind of one of those rooms that you never go into. Or maybe a chair. And you've got a chair in the house that nobody sets in unless, unless you're that guest that has to, you're the odd one out and you have to sit in that chair. Take a moment to take your coffee and just go, Sit in that chair. Sit there and get a look at the way the room looks. Take a moment to reflect on the way your life looks, how you're feeling, how tired you may be or not. You know, maybe you're maybe you got energy that day. Maybe you just need to rest. One of the practices um, when people gather. Um, in a sukkah, is they not only invite their their um, their living neighbors and their family and people they want there, they also remind themselves about the other folk of faith, the heroes of faith, the men and women who have gone before that they may have wanted to sit with and have a conversation, to learn their wisdom from. It could be that you could imagine who those folk are for you. And just begin to have that conversation in your mind about what would it be like during this time if your grandmother were sitting with you or whoever. And begin to remember their stories of strength and wisdom and the resilience they had in their lives and the things that they had to go through. Maybe it is, maybe what you want to imagine is, okay, when, when, the, when you have the next time to have a young child with you or a young child you may imagine in the future in your family, what is it you want to tell them about this time? Because our faith would say 
that no matter what it is we're going through, there are going to be times in which um, that which God has already provided is going to become evident. It's going to already be there. Do any of you, I, uh, any of you have a guess what the words sound like that mean what is it in Hebrew? You all know it. I know you know it. The words that mean what is it in Hebrew sound a whole lot like manna. It's not, they didn't run out there and look at the stuff that was laying on the ground and say, oh, well, what should we call it? Well, we'll call it manna. They ran out and they said, what is it? And the words, what is it, sound like manna. And lots of times in our life, we're finding those moments when we're going, what is that? What is this? What's happening? And it ends up bearing a blessing that we would not have anticipated. This week, as you go, um, as you go through your life, as you find those questions that you're, you have, either in those moments where you um, just feel overwhelmed and lonely, or in those moments when it has been too crazy for you to have kept it all together, give yourself a chance to go set in a different place. Go set in a different place and take a moment to breathe. And as you sit there, remember the presence of God and those who love you and care for you in your life. That we might all walk a little more softly love a little more deeply and be a little more gracious to ourselves and to those we love. Amen. So now we have a chance to celebrate the good things that have happened this week. Anything good happened this week? Yeah. Nebraska's going to play football. That's right, Virginia. And that's, yes, that is great. Good. Other good things that have happened this week. Yeah. Yeah, Bob. Scott and Marjorie Shreve, welcome. We're, we're glad to have you back. It's so, so nice to see you. And Bob, it's great to have you. Thanks for being here. Yeah. Other things that have happened good this week. trying to remember from the first service. Anything good from Zoom? Okay. All right. Oh, good. Good. Um, anything not so good that we can carry? Oh, Marjorie, so, sorry. Your apple pie turned out good. <laughs> All right. <laughs> that is a good thing. Anything not so good that we can remember and carry with e for each other this week? Chuck. From the, from, the, from the chat stream that's coming in, two friends have passed away this week unexpectedly. From Madeline, okay. Madeline's been back. Do you all remember... Um, uh, Don Gary and Joe Wenzel, or maybe Mark Gary and his wife Christy. Um, Don and Mark's father died this past week. Um, he had been struggling with cancer for a long time. And um, so if we could just remember and lift them up, it's one of those moments where people are going to be grieving and celebrating a life, but doing it in a way that we that's different from the way we usually do that. So remember them. And then... Um, I think it's Terry. Terry Dwyer was in the 9 o'clock service, was talking about a friend's 24-year-old 24 24 year child um, has just discovered he has a rare form of liver cancer and is in his, they're beginning to deal with that today. And so he was just wanting to remember that family. Any other things that we can carry for each other? Yeah, it is sad. Yeah. Let's just take a moment to sit and pray. Remember your breaths. Take a deep breath for yourself.
Take a deep breath for those who are gathered around you. Take a deep breath for those, for this moment that never happens again. Gracious and loving God, we just pause a moment to listen for your still small voice in our lives. The voice that echoes back to us how much you love us and overcomes the voice in our own heads that criticizes us all the time. Your voice of love that helps us deal with a pang of loneliness or grief or doubt. Your voice that seeps into the cracks in our soul and brings healing. Lord, we remember the good things that have happened this week. Grandchildren that have been born, birthdays that have been celebrated, family that has returned for a while. The opportunity to see people that we haven't seen in a long time. And Lord, we remember those, ber- those, those times where there's, just, there's questions and there's worries. People have questions about their health that they're not sure what the answer is going to be. We grieve. And we wonder what um, next week will be like. Lord, help us to, um, to just be, to just sit in the presence of your love. knowing that we are enough and that you are enough. And that in the midst of it all, there's enough for everyone. Lord, we pray these things as your disciples. We pray these things as people who hope for the courage and the opportunity to live out every day the things for which we pray when we pray together. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Amen. Hey, when, as Chuck is coming up here to do the announcements, come on, Chuck. I'm just going to do um, Today I decided to wear a mask because um, when I, I, I'm asking for your opinions and your opinions uh, who are watching at home, um, I decided to wear a mask instead of the face shield because I've reached that age where the optometrist has one of my eyes looks far away and the other eye looks close up. And when I put the mask on, I, I have not yet learned to see at all through that thing. So, but I can learn new things. So I'm just asking folk if the if the visor works better than the face mask so if you have an opinion tell me your opinion i just thought you were inviting us all over to your house to watch big screen tv when nebraska plays oh wow uh, so I, nope that wasn't it that wasn't it but I, it's I mean, not a bad I, idea i mean I was, I was listening to you as you were going through your sermon and i i looked at the mask and i saw the huskers and you're talking about inviting people anyway i just i uh, I digress. Um, uh, is there anything that you'd like to share with the life of the church before I go through some of the general announcements that we have? Something that uh, you know that's coming up that uh, you n- might not be a part of that? If not, I'll check one more time before we're done. But go ahead, Brian. Let's go ahead and put some of those uh, slides up there. Let's start with children's ministry. Uh, started last week, uh, children's ministry is uh, recorded ahead of time and send out to the, the uh, uh, families. 
Uh, last week, the attendance was pretty good. Uh, we'll see what this week is like, but each week, Sarah sends that out. If someone uh, that you know might be interested in that, please contact the church office or contact Sarah. Uh, Bible Sunday is uh, next week, the 27th. And uh, if you, uh, if there's a, uh, if someone has a son or daughter uh, that age that would like to uh, be a part of that, and they so far have not contacted Sarah, uh, again, contact Sarah. Mission Kids, which is a, a group that uh, Sarah has for the same age group, uh, begins, and it's on the first Wednesday of every month, begins in October, so October 7th from 6 to 7 p.m. Uh, youth Zoom on Sunday, had that this morning at 9.45. Um, next week, it will also be in the evening. Uh, and uh, everyone should uh, pay close attention to Chris's uh, information that he sends out via email. Uh, and if there are questions, uh, visit with him about that. Uh, the Wednesday night evening youth group uh, started, uh, I think, last week, went well. Uh, and um, uh, we'll continue on Wednesday nights, and they've made COVID-friendly um, uh, precautions for uh, food, so there's even a snack there for the youth uh, in this day that we're dealing with uh, and the restrictions that we have. Chris would like to talk to you about a bake sale, a fundraiser, and how we're adapting that uh, for the fall for the youth. Thanks. Um, so once a year, uh, our youth ministry puts on a baked goods fundraiser. Uh, in past years, we've had a lot of people baking, but because of all the food restrictions and stuff like that, this year we're uh, going to do it a little bit differently. We are asking for individuals and families who may want to um, donate a uh, gift card. Uh, it could be to a pizza place or a bakery or whatever, um, but donate a gift card that we can auction off online um, later in October. Uh, the other way to participate would just be to, if you are really a, a baker and someone who wants to create something yummy, we would love to have you do that. Um, we can talk more about the details on that. Um, but just, just contact me. My, the information is up there. Can you move the slide forward one? Thanks. And that's my information. Just, just reach out and contact me, and we can talk more about how you can be supportive. Uh, all of our proceeds go towards our uh, summer mission trip, uh, and just to some of the youth programming that we have throughout the year. So your support is appreciated. Wonderful. Okay, now, uh, one thing that you cannot forget about is those animals at home. Uh, and someone was joking around this morning, no, they don't have to wear masks for the blessing of the animals. Uh, but that is coming up on the 27th at 4.30. Uh, it will be under the South Canopy entrance. That's where we had it last year. There will be ice cream for the human beings that are there. Uh, so we, we will have that. People enjoyed that quite a bit last year, and we want to have it again. Trunk or treat. We're combining trunk or treat with National Night Out. We're trying to do both at the same time now that, uh, think that we can get maybe some police officers and firemen. We'll see if we can get all those folks here at the same time. And we're hoping that the children who come for trunk or treat have as much fun as the adults. If you've ever been here and seen how people decorate their, their, the trunks of their cars and enjoy seeing the children, uh, it, is a, it is a very nice event. And we hope that uh, we can uh, uh, have that event as planned and be, uh, be able to do as much as possible under the possible under the restrictions that we have right now and the last thing is our next adult study will uh, there was a request for a just a simple bible study and we're going to work with adam hamilton's book uh, i read the first chapter easy to read he just goes through some basic things and tries to allow people to understand really how to how to look at the bible uh, he is to the point succinct and uh, uh, has some very interesting perspectives that I think all of us uh, can learn from. So if you'd like to participate in that, you don't need to have a book. You can have a book. I will prepare information to be sent out to you every week so that you can be a part of that activity, whether you want to read it or not, uh, be a part of the discussion. With that, is there anything else that uh, you might have uh, that uh, you've thought of uh, for the life of the church? Okay. 
Well, let's look up at the screen and let's read our benediction together. Just a reminder, after the benediction, we're going to stay seated for the postlude. Uh, we'll listen to that. And then after that's over, you're free to go ahead and get up and leave. Now, let us go in peace to live a faith that matters, to grow in the love of God, and to serve wherever we're led. Amen. Amen.